Hey, it's your Boomer Consumer. I think this video is going to be a bit of a fun one. This is the new H7 Pro from Dalk Audio, right? And I want to give a shout out to Dalk for sending this to me for review. However, all opinions are my own, and no one has reviewed this video prior to posting. One of the things their marketing says is that the two VU meters give it a nice vintage look. Now, I got to looking at the H7, and if I recall, it had one VU meter, but you had like two separate volume controls, one for the left and right channel. It's all combined into a single balanced control now. The price is $129.99. Now, this ship with a 32-volt 5-amp uh, power supply, and the rated power with that, according to Dowk, is about 70, uh, 78 watts per channel into 4 ohms and about 65 per channel uh, into 8 ohms under 1% distortion. So there is that. Now that said, I think that this got very, very loud. I never used the volume control above about 11 o'clock. It got loud very, very quick. There's plenty of power here for the average user. This isn't meant to, you know, fill a concert hall space with loud volume, but for its design and its purpose, whether it's a small home office, a den, a bedroom, something like that, I think it's going to be uh, capable of more than enough power to drive a, a great pair of speakers to pretty loud volumes. So in the box, you get the H7 Pro. Uh, mine shipped with the 32-volt power supply, a user manual, and you get the warranty card. Warranty is good for one year. Let's just talk a little bit about the build quality. So physically, this measures 6.57 inches in width, 4.96 inches in depth, and 1.65 inches in height. It's a all uh, aluminum enclosure on here. It never got hot, even when I poured a lot of power to it. It did get warm, but it didn't get really, really hot. Okay, so you have that, this nice metal body on here. Weighs just under two pounds. And the meters on here are adjustable. So if you listen to like lower volumes, but you want to see those meters go, you can adjust that. And those are located underneath the H7 Pro. Oh, and I should mention these knobs, the knob feel on here, the volume control has a nice click feel to it. I don't think you can hear it, but you can feel it, the, the steps on there. These appear to be metal and they do have a nice knurled texture on them. So looking at the front, you have volume meters for your left and right channel, the balance control, your volume control, and then you have a switch for your uh, your inputs on here, whether you're using the XLR or the RCA. I have not used it with XLR, but I did use it with the RCA, and then three positions, RCA, XLR, and then off. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back of the H7 Pro. You get two XLR inputs. You get RCA inputs. There is an RCA output, which they, I believe they want you to uh, use that, say, with a powered subwoofer. You get your binding post for your speakers that accept with bare wire and also banana plugs. And then finally, you have the power connection right there. Let's take a look at the bottom. I don't know if you can see these. There we go. But on the bottom would be your adjustments for the meters. Now, when I was testing this, here's the sources that I use. I use the Golden Wave Serenade R2R DAC from Hi-Fi Man. I also use all CDs this time, and that was from the NAD CD or C538 CD player. As far as speakers used, um, I used the Klipsch R51Ms and the Kef Q150 speakers. Now, for music selections, the first CD I listened to was Asia from Steely Dan. This is their sixth studio album. Interesting point about this album. The name Asia actually, I believe, come from Donald Fagan's high school friend who married a Korean woman named Asia, and I think that's where the name, the name came from. But that being said, the title track on Asia it just presented a nice wide soundstage. The detailed imaging was great. 
I found the amp a little bit on the bright side, especially with the R51Ms, but I was more subdued when I connected the Q150s to it. Now, one of my reference tracks is Deacon Blues, and I think the amp provided really good separation to this point. The tonality was rich and textured with it, and there just was a nice, nice performance by this amp. Now, the song track, or yeah, the track, Egg. That's when you really felt a lot of punch with this little amp. The bass was fast, and it wasn't muddy. And I think it just really stripped away the layers and the music with great detail. And I think these little Class D amps would just keep getting better and better all the time. Now, the next piece of music that let's do is Robert Plant's Now and Zen. Right? And Now and Zen, just a wonderful album. Uh, I think it was... Um, done in 1988. It's just a very explosive album. If you want something with a lot of punch, a lot of dynamics, a lot of vocals, you want to really hit that mid-range, this is a great album to listen to for that. The track, The Way I Feel, the H7 Pro always seemed a bit north and neutral on the vocals. I just felt it was a little overly bright, but everything was crisp and clear on this, and the instruments just had that right amount of pace, rhythm, and timing, also known as Pratt. That's what gets your toes tapping, and that certainly was the case with H7 Pro. Now, the final album that I used to audition was the Rolling Stones. It's only rock and roll. This is their 12th studio album. And again, the H7 Pro, it just gives you this nice, deep, wide soundstage. And the title track, I found that the bass seemed to be a bit dark on here, leaning maybe towards slightly muddy at times. But I still found, and I also found, the brightness on the mids and the high end to be a just a little north of neutral on there. It just seemed warm. Whether I used um, the Kemps or whether I used the Clips didn't really matter. All right, let me give you my impressions of the H7 Pro. I think it's very well made. Love the meters. Who doesn't love meters? I found that the adjustment for the meters on the bottom just a bit strange, but I get it why they did it because it is compact and there was only so much room. Like many Class D amplifiers, Pairing the speakers, I think, is going to be very, very important with this unit. No tone controls. It would have been helpful to have at least a bass and treble control on here. And the reason being, I just felt that this is a bit on the bright side, a bit warm in the texture, in the musicality of the, of the high end of the treble, and also mid-range. So the lack of tone controls, eh, not great about that. No remote control with it. Okay, I can live without a remote control. So my honest opinion is there is some excellent competition out there in this space. But you know, given these beautiful meters, it does have excellent detail, very fa just fantastic soundstage and imaging. I think this is a real contender in that uh, price range for your dollar, and I certainly think it deserves some attention. And that is it. That is my review of the Dalk Audio H7 Pro.